All right. This one is actually configured properly. It looks like it's booting, so hopefully we can take on a third target tonight. Alright, this one booted up. Let's see if we can discover it. Again, can I try and show off net discover actually finding a host? It's an alternative to an nmap ping sweep. Give it a sec for DHCP to hopefully give it an address. Alright, it looks up. Let's find it. So we're expecting something in the neighborhood of like dot .136, something higher than the last few we had. So I'm guessing might be this dot 137 right here so let's check uh, let me also just check the uh, mac address manual in the box so i can verify it for us so the network adapter on this box is indeed ends in 2a so that is it so we have the net discover output and our target is dot one dot five dot 137 Let's port scan it. Finally back into some actual action. Alright, so what do we got? We've got port 22 and in port 80. So, it is fairly similar to what we've seen before, but hopefully the web is just something other than VirtualBox. Let's stick with that current theme. So, port 137. Why do I have two Oh, we have the insured window, so let's close that out. We don't need that anymore. Alright. So welcome to Cybersploit 2. Looks like there's some sort of page with usernames, maybe passwords. Uh, maybe we can log in as them to the box or something. So there's number, username, password, handle. It looks to be some sort of nine usernames. So a white hat button, there's a black hat button, red teaming, noobs, and coder. Doesn't seem to really do anything. Let's view the source of the page, see if we see anything interesting. Oh, and let's hit a stream marker so I don't forget. So nothing there. Uh, slightly messed up their HTML, it looks like. Oh, they forgot to open their new table row, so that's why it got broken at the end. Optional JavaScript. Rot 47, so that's some sort of hint, probably. So, rotational cipher 47 times. jQuery, popper, and bootstrap. Nothing we really need there. So, let's run Derby on this web post, see if we can see anything else interesting. We, I, oh. I don't want to just jump into trying to log in as these users, but let's give it a try. So SSH mark at. So we'll try all the passwords listed on that page, see if any of them work. Auto, capital O, did not work. Jacob, Thornton, nope, Larry, oops, 
the space bird. I like that one. So I'm just trying the list of credentials I found on this page, just in case some of them work. That D9 is weird. That may be what the hint for Rot42 is. I don't even know if we can use that as a valid username. Yeah, we can. Oh, well, we need space. Oh, well, it did allow it. Let's grab a password. I'm guessing this is not valid, but it does look weird. Nope. Sam. U W S H D I J W I. The next one looks most like a username and password. Um, C E V G L. C E V G L at one two three four. Nope. One two three four. Nope. All right. Madhu. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So nothing yet. Not that surprising. Didn't seem like those would be likely username and passwords, but always worth trying if you find credentials. I love my John. Love you, dear. So nothing yet. So let's pull up Cyber Chef and see if there's anything interesting with Rot 47. Maybe this one. So we've got our input. Rot 47. Okay, so that does look kind of like something. So let's rot 30, 47 and this as well. Let's grab a quick screenshot first before we get too far. And we'll grab a screenshot of the hint. I did not do that yet either. So again, same as the other ones. If you have a web app, be sure to check your source code. There may be interesting things in the JavaScript. There may be hints if it is a capture the flag competition like this. So let's try Rot47 on this alleged password field. Cybersploit1. So I'm guessing this is a valid creds. So let's try them. Cybersploit1. All right, we have our first foothold, nice and easy. Now this looks like some sort of restricted shell, but we will see. Hey, thanks for the follow, Sideway. All the way up in your new sunny home. We are doing phone hubs. Hint Docker. I'm guessing that Docker might be involved. So we may need to escape a Docker container. Or enter a Docker container. Let's see what's in the HTML directory as well. What? Oh. So nothing other than the index file we found earlier that gave us the ROT47 hit. Very extreme ROT13 upgrade. So. Is anything running in Docker? I, I try to avoid using Tor so the onions don't make me sick, but I will use it from time to time. Sometimes you have to suffer through. Just like I will eat small pieces of Mexican food if there's only a little bit of onions on them. And suffer. Alright, so... Are we the Docker container? Keep that open. Let's 
see if we are in the Docker container. So let's take a look in a proc. We got our notes for that, right? Yep. say Docker, so I don't think we are in Docker. Our CPU is... We don't have a CPU. Or device. Yeah, I think we're not running in Docker. Rocks off Seeker. I don't think we are Docker, so that's good. Can we run Docker with sudo? Uh, Cybersploit1. No, no sudo pros. So are we, does the system have an old version of Docker? We could exploit? Let's play a game called I don't know what the current version of Docker is. vulnerability wise what else is running it's, I wish I could make this bigger but Yeah, this, this is what I wanted. I want to see the full lines. Watch a uh, gross SSH command. Okay. So, Docker is running. I don't think it's doing anything, but it's running as root. Let's see, also, let's see if there are any other users on this box. We did not do that yet. So, no other users other than our, our Shalendra. Sounds like Coheed, this free song. Hyperschmidt. Interesting. Huh? So, how can we use Docker to prove this? Is Docker sued? If Docker runs sued, we can try and use that to escalate. Let's check that. Find any sued files. It should run sued since it needs to do containers and magic and such. Interesting there, but let's look at the actual Docker binary. Are we part of the Docker group? We are part of the Docker group. So what can 
army do with this? So if we can start docker containers, they'll run as root. And if what ports are open, just 22 and 80. So I'm guessing since we're part of the docker group, we need to start a docker container, which will then be running as root and then exit the docker container. There's no containers currently running. Oh. So we can make a new Docker container. So we don't have any containers yet. Can we just make a blank container? I don't want to download one. Yeah. Docker. Can we just do Docker Create? Will that just work? Looks like it might. Uh, we have to do things. I don't want to do things. I want to just create a container. Um, Docker Create. Uh, Fedora Bash. We will download Fedora. All right, so we're gonna make a Fedora container, then mount our entire file system from here into that Fedora Docker container, and then we'll see if we can find some private keys or worst case scenario, the shadow file. Okay. So now we should have. see it do we have to just oh now we can just oh we need this right that's the name of it duh so now we need docker start I'm very good at docker i promise professional all right so now it should be running what uh oh i mean <laughs> Duh, I'm in it because I made it interactive. Awesome. I don't want it interactive. So now I need to start it. Run. Run. Root into mount. Own. Oh, we have to start it, not run. Okay, now it's started. Woo. Docker commands, man. Let's grab this output so we don't forget how to do it in the future. All of these. Alright, so now we have a Fedora Docker hopefully started. Grab the output and clean it up quickly. Okay. Now we should be able to see it running. Hopefully. Oh, we're still in the stupid thing. Okay, I need to run it. What the hell is the difference between Docker Run and Docker Start? That's what we're learning right now. But we should be able to do Docker Run propose mount root into mount pwned, like this little guide says, ti and this container. Except the image doesn't exist. Why doesn't the image exist? We created it. Do we need that image ID? We just use 
this. There we go. Whew. All right. Now that we finally have a basic understanding of Docker, we should be rooted in this little Docker thing. So now in slash mount slash pwned. Sweet. So this is the root directory of our host box. So now we should pilfer this and try and get root access. No new lines. No new lines in what? My Docker commands? I don't know. The new event should be cool. I haven't actually logged into it, but definitely looking to see the skin replacement. Oh, and your last message. Oh, I totally missed that between the pretzel ones. Yeah, so I needed the container ID. That was the problem. Oh, I also could have done. Yeah, see, I think my problem was I was doing create start instead of. Um, who's in what? Start instead of create or create instead of start. So is there anything in CentOS? No. nothing in root either oh we're okay so we're mount pwned okay so let's grab the shadow file I don't think we're gonna have to crack passwords. But if we have to, we've got them. So how else can we get root with, do we have read access or write access? I'm guessing it's just read, right? Right, it's just, it's just read access, docker mount. to check touch temp testing one two three and then we will ssh shy can't spell shy lentra and then is cyber exploit one okay so it is read only which is expected but i needed to verify that um, what can we grab other than the shadow file to get access? I mean, we could just try and crack the root password, but it feels like that's not the that's not the expected way. But let's let's start it anyway. I wouldn't make you grab a shadow file to crack it. That'd be just cruel. Touch or ashes.txt. So we got root and sent to us. If they are easy, John will pop them pretty quick, so we'll let that go. So other than that. What other files? So there's no SSH key for root or CentOS. There's... <sighs> what files can we use to escalate to root? Or how can we just escape?
right? We can use that, we can create containers and sue it. We do have permission to compromise this. There's no flag, but we need. So it's like reading files. We come out the full file system of hosts to gain full access and then chroot to gain full privileges. But it won't. Using chroot on the mount directory just means we have root access to the file system, technically. We don't have root access to this box yet. I feel like that doesn't quite count. I want, because our shell will be root at this box still. Be, it'll just stay this, or just have a different ch root, right? Do I understand how ch root works? I guess I don't know how ch root works with Docker. So let's, it's easy enough to test. So let's, so if we do chroot, no, oh wait, no, hold on, exit. So when we run it, we do slash, into slash mount slash pwn. And then we chroot, mount pwn and then we do this other stuff let's see what happens oh wait hold on that's not right alpine is the my bad i think we may need this at the end ah order of operations so we want this and then siege root order of commands matters okay so now we're root. What fucking host are we on now? I thought it would make our root context. Yeah, so we're in host DA blah blah blah. But what happens if we mess with the file system this time? So. Oh, apparently CentOS's password is 1234 as well, so that is another option. But before we get there, let's log back into that box. This is a good one for me to check. All right, so temp is empty. So if we touch temp testing 123, does it show up on this box? Okay, it does. So when we see each root, our Docker container, we actually end up having root access to the box itself. Word. I didn't realize that would still give us write permissions. Especially since our host name is this. So now what we can do is We can edit the Etsy password file, because I still don't consider this a true root. And we will add a line for our Doiler user. And we will use the password we used on the last one, which was just password with a zero where that hash go. There we go. All right, so this is password with a zero. We're gonna make our doiler user root. Um, we don't care about the description, we'll just make doiler. Um, 
slash root and bin bash. So now when we save this, we should be able to SSH as Doiler to this box. And instead of having our CH rooted shell, we should be able to So password with a zero. Now we are actually root on the fit on the box itself, not inside of a CH rooted Docker container, which basically is the same thing as far as I now know. But now we can actually do whatever we want. Did I break that logs directory? Is that me or them? I don't know. Now we have a flag.txt. Congrats, share with Twitter at Cybersploit. We did it. So we got this. So that is the root of this box. So that was definitely something different for me. Now I know why you don't let regular users have access to Docker. Or don't put them in the Docker group. Bad things will happen. Anything interesting in our past history? Some virtual hosts. A lot of command stuff. Some firewall stuff. We already grabbed the shadow file. Oh, no, we didn't. We'll grab that too for our reference. Oh, we did, and we cracked. So, yeah, let's also verify that the CentOS password we cracked works. Yeah. So, one, two, three, four was the password we grabbed. And was that in this list anywhere? It was not. Yeah. So, that actually worked too. So, we could have gone about it that way. I don't think CentOS has. Pseudo burst does it. Hey, hey, look at that. We could have also done this. Pseudo bin bash ID. Look at that. A different way to root as well. So we could have grabbed the Etsy password file, or Etsy shadow file with our, just our mount, not the CH root. Crack the CentOS password, SSH as CentOS with 1234 and escalate using pseudo bin bash. That is awesome. So that is it for this box. Hey, watching while working sounds awesome. So this box was a very different. We found a username and password that was rot47 encoded on this scoreboard page or whatnot with a hint in the source we ssh as this user they had privileges to run docker containers we created a new one mounted the host file system into the docker container giving us read access to everything then we used ch root to end up getting a command shell via adding a user to etsy password so for those of you that asked about making noise, that is obviously the biggest noise we made. We edited the Etsy password file, as well as technically adding a new user to it. Uh, alternatively, we could have cracked the CentOS password from just reading Etsy shadow, SSH'd, and used the pseudo privs. So that is this box. That wasn't too complicated, but I did actually learn a bit from it, so that's cool. Let me just update my notes. So that is another three boxes this week so far. So a little bit of quiet over a week, but we did get three boxes also this week so far. That may be it. 
at this point not a ton of people watching um we will i will clip these though and i also will blog about them but 